Good afternoon, everyone. So good to see you all. It is an honor and a pleasure to be here today. My name is Marianne Wu, and I'm joined here today with my dear colleagues, Dr. Ian Howard and Dr. Ying Wang from the USC Mann School of Pharmacy and Pharmaceutical Sciences. Our talk today is about the use of artificial intelligence in education uh, to meet the healthcare needs of society specifically through our research called AI SIPS, or Artificial Intelligence Success in Pharmacy School. This is our AI SIPS team. We've had four AI student workers, including Gopi and Kush, who are here today online, as well as three PharmD students and recent graduates. Before we dive into our research project, we want to share a little bit more about our school for anyone who may not be familiar with it. At the USC Mann School, we have about 1,200 students. Almost two-thirds of the student body is within our Doctor of Pharmacy program, or PharmD degree. And the rest of the students are roughly one-third our combination of PhD students, Doctor of Regulatory Science students, master's students, graduate visitors, and undergraduate students. So given that we have a very large cohort of students pursuing a Doctor of Pharmacy degree at our school, that is a group that we're going to focus on primarily for the focus of this talk today. So to give you a little bit of background information on the purpose of our study, as we know, the cost of higher education in general in the United States is very expensive. The current average four-year loan for a USC PharmD student is $222,000. Our students' career aspirations are becoming wider and more diverse, and our students are also seeking further education and training upon graduation, including residencies and fellowships. And we also know from a societal perspective that the needs of pharmacists are also changing rapidly. So given the cost of a PharmD degree coupled with the healthcare needs of society, we want to do our part to help ensure that we set up the success of all of our students at USC upon graduation. And we believe that this may be facilitated through the use of AI. So we just recently asked our fourth year students, we call them P4 students, who are about to graduate next month, what are your current plans upon graduation as of late March 2023? And so by now, they should know whether or not they're going to be doing a residency, a fellowship, or whether they're just going straight to the workforce upon graduation. We've categorized these students' uh, career plans or outcomes upon graduation using the acronym RICH. Okay, so that's Residency, Industry, Community, and Hospital. So you'll be hearing us use this acronym and outcome of RICH several more times throughout this presentation. As you can see from the table, approximately 40% of those students are going to be pursuing a residency typically related to patient care uh, after graduation. So that's R for residency. Approximately 12% are going to be pursuing a fellowship or additional education, and those students represent the I for industry or typically non-patient care. And then approximately 42% are going into full-time work, and we represent it as a CH or community or pharmacy, or sorry, community or hospital, I should say. Okay, so since this is all about AI for society, let's take a look at what our societal needs are for pharmacy. So back in 2019, we just happened to have a very visionary, forward-thinking leader who we just happened to meet a few hours ago named Dean Vasilios Papadopoulos. And Dean Papadopoulos wanted to know, what are the key trends that may drive pharmacy education and training in the future? And then led a group of consultants to interview leaders within pharmacy with this knowledge. Okay. So this table on the left is what you just saw on the previous slide. However, on the right, we added how these trends align with the, quote, rich outcomes. So based on those 10 areas of key trends, we can see it's fairly evenly distributed. We need for society roughly about one third of students who go into residency, about a third who go into industry, and about a third who go into community and hospital to meet the needs of society. So to help us navigate what we can do to help our students meet the needs of society, help us set up our students for success, I'm going to turn over to Dr. Ying Wang. All right, thanks so much, Marianne. Okay, so this was our initial design of AI SIPs. So these are all the different types of data that we have and continue to collect throughout the curriculum. Some examples include grade point averages, confidence levels, work hours in paid internships, and order of app or rotations. Um, the data, we, we added this data into NIME, an artificial intelligence software, to see if certain variables could position our students towards a career path that meets healthcare needs and opportunities for pharmacists. 
steps. So this diagram helps portray a summary of our results, uh, which points out the variables that may impact a student's success in reaching one of the rich outcomes. First, we learned that students with certain rotation orders, as well as um, academic success in certain courses, had a higher chance of met matching for residency. We also learned that students who felt confident about starting their final year of rotations had a higher chance of uh, matching for residency, and confidence may also be related to a pursuit of a career in industry. What's also interesting is that earlier courses focused on practical knowledge um, applications seem to impact confidence in later years in the curriculum. Finally, working a certain number of hours during school could impact whether a student matches for residency or end up working in the community or hospital setting after graduation. So now we'll get into a little bit more details um, about the points that I just mentioned earlier. The first point was about rotation order and whether it has an impact on matching for residency. So to investigate this, we pulled the rotation schedules for three of our class cohorts and added them into the NIME software. Each student um, has uh, six rotations that are required in the final year of the PharmD program, uh, one of which includes a clinical rotation called acute care medicine or PHR 701. The NIME software allows us to analyze the data using this decision tree format. So out of the 274 students who entered the match, 67.2% matched and 32.8% did not match. The decision tree also allows us to see what the most significant factor is at the top of this tree. And here you see it's that acute care medicine rotation we mentioned. Additionally, if students had this rotation early, they had a 70.2% match rate versus students who had it later, uh, which resulted in 58% match rate. Uh, we believe this may be due to more experience and confidence in the residency application and interview process uh, that may make them appear to be a stronger candidate. So due to these preliminary results, we changed our rotation scheduling process. For the current class who just started their final year on rotations, we implemented a survey to ask them about their post-graduation plans and then assigned them early rotations to maximize their chances to achieve their desired outcomes. So with this change, students appeared more satisfied with their schedules with this sense that they were in a better position to meet their desired post-graduation goals. So this was just one example of how AI data can help drive student success. Now I'll pass it over to Ian uh, to close out our presentation. Thanks, Ian. Um, so um, let me uh, just finish up here with a, uh, a few comments on a, a little bit more of a raw data that we're building into this model. And um, one of the things that we, um, we, we worry about in, in pharmacy certainly is work hours of students. And these results are really quite interesting because we, we found looking at the work hours that there was a sweet spot. If you, if you work too little or too much, you succeed less. If you work for a certain amount, you succeed more. I mean, that's basically the result. Um, and then on confidence, as you might expect, more confident students tended to do better on their residency match. Um, oh, what happened there? Oh, how do I get this forward? Was it this? You want to go back? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Can I just go forward here? I don't know what happened. Yeah. There we go. Yeah. Yeah. I can go there. I've got, I've got it here. Yeah. Okay. So, um, so the question is, where did that confidence come from? And um, what, what we found in uh, analyzing a lot of our data, our course data, is it really came from early, early curriculum courses and particularly practical courses. So this gave us some insight in what the curriculum was doing. Um, of course, not surprisingly, also academic success matches well with, with matching for, for residency. And so this is certainly a, a result that came out again of this, of this analysis of these data for late curriculum courses yep and um so that allowed us then to create a machine learning model basic message here is that we can present we we can predict the um the success rate of going into these different categories the r i and c h categories with about 72 percent accuracy that's pretty good um and so 
just to uh, summarize them, we have an AI model that is allowing us to uh, make programmatic changes. We can actually intervene with students. We can give them advice, typically for working hours and kind of courses that they might want to focus on. Um, we're, we're building our missions data into this model so that we can predict these um, outcomes in advance. And really, our real goal here is that pharmacy is changing. We want to recruit a class that is that is matched to the societal needs of pharmacists in the future. And, and so we, we're going to use this, this model, hopefully, to do that. Um, and here's our contact information, and we'd be happy to uh, answer questions to the end in the future.